Hello everyone, thanks for joining in. So we are continuing with the extended workforce management powered by SAP Fidlas. So in the earlier sessions, so we have covered few topics. So I will just tell you the formula. So we were in the step part number B, 22 steps for service document for the work order. We are covering that topic. So in this topic, we have covered two scenarios, how to create and uh, submit a job posting. And also we have seen in this, uh, how to approve the job posting as well, right? So in today's topic, we will be starting to somehow to submit a job seeker to job posting, right? So let's move on to the, our topic. I will share the slides also, what we have seen uh, just for your reference, like yes, last time in the 22 steps. So the first step we have covered how to create a job posting. And uh, below that we have seen, so there's a different screenshot we have taken. And if you have missed, you can also watch the recording of the session in my platform. So this was a success for the first step. So now after that, in the second step, we have approved means uh, the approver has approved this particular job posting. So now today we are going to see how to submit a job seeker with job postings. But who will be doing this activity? So this will be a typically job of a supplier. The first, the company who will be supplying the talents or those uh, contingent workforce, they will be submitting the job seeker to the job posting. So now without any delay, so let's move on to our screen where I have logged in as a, so in this extend workforce management, third step we are in, submit a job seeker to the job posting. The persona will be the supplier and will be using the product field glass here, right? So these are the different steps you have to follow in this. So we have to log in to the sub, SAP field glass is a supplier. So I have already logged in. In my system, you can see that this is uh, my field glass. Tool. Let me go to the home page of this. I have logged in as a supplier. You can see SU, that means supplier, right? So this is a supplier. And uh, what the supplier will be doing. So basically, in the supplier, I should be able to see the job which are posted by the buyer. Buyer, what the buyer? The company who are seeking talents. Supplier means the company who are supplying the talents, right? So in the contingent workforce scenario, this is how the term we have to use buyer and supplier, right? So here, let's say I would like to see the job posting. Let's try this, view my job task dashboard. I will go to my dashboard. So what are the jobs have been already posted? So you can see there are active job posting 12, right? So, if you have remembered which job we have posted last time, we can see this. So before we go there, we'll just uh, have a look into the dashboard. So in the left hand side, you can see what are the job have been posted and uh, who are the buyer. Okay, so from the buyer list, you can see only we have all the customer readiness, something like that. But you can also filter that. And also, if you remember the job posting title, so we have uh, in the step number one of this entire scenario, we have posted a billing analyst, isn't it? So if I go there, billing. So this is a job which we have posted. And if you remember the step number, our the slide also, if you see the post job, which we have posted as a buyer, that was the ID, that is the CRD one JP ending with the 204, right? So this is the job posting ID. Now we are going to see that as well here in our system, CRD1JP204. Yeah, so this is the right ID. So the right job posting, what I need to do. So we have all the options here. So the buyer is a customer readiness buyer. And we go to the details about it. Let's see what the buyer has asked. So I can see in this billing analyst, this was uh, Billable position, there are two cost centers, job position is this, company code, purchase unit, site location. So whatever the buyer has submitted, I can 
as a supplier, I can view that here. Okay, so these are the job position details. I do have a billing information. So Detroit US based. And uh, comments also, I can see the buyer has told that we need it urgently. So I can see that comments as well, or the documents, whatever the buyer has uh, attached. I can see that, let's see. So I can view that. This is an in view, uh, inline view. I don't have to download as such. So, but yes, uh, if I want, I can download, right? So this is something, is a standard feature, it comes like this. So I can see that it's a test document. I can see that test document. It has been submitted by the buyer, right? So this is uh, how as a supplier, I can see the job posting from my dashboard. Okay, so let's see how, what is the, okay, so what is the expectation in this particular step? So we can have already seen this log, we are able to log in and access and review the job posting. We have seen that, submit it. Now the start step, what we are going to do in this step, we will be submitting a new job seeker, right? So here we will be seeking a new job seeker. Let's say submit a new job seeker. So we'll click the submit new job seeker. Then now this screen appears, right? So sub submit job seeker set up rates review and submit right so billing analyst that id we have to track because that is our id for job posting so let's take a snapshot also this how the step steps looks like in our presentation for our review later on step number three is submitting job secret with job posting so whenever you are some before submitting to how the screen looks like the pop-up is Submit a job seeker. And uh, before that, it looks like this. Billing analyst. And we have to highlight the job hosting ID here. This is very important. So you have to ensure this looks like this. So I will simply highlight this. Put the green marker, my favorite. Okay. So I will simply... Add it here. Right. So now let's submit the job seeker. Let's submit the job seeker now. So what I will do? Job posting ID is there. Such all workforce records determine if the individual has been previously submitted before creating a job seeker. Such all one first records, which money can individual has been previously submitted before creating a job seeker. Okay, so we have an option to here, existing workforce options. Let's see that. Okay, suppose I'm looking for any specific city or any specific distance, right? So let's say that options also I do have here. Let's say only in... 50 kilometers. It's the common thing in the metro city. Detroit. Okay, let's see if that city is there or not. Minnesota, Detroit next. So Detroit, Illinois. Let's try that. Okay, that option is uh, somehow not coming. Okay. okay, I have to search my name, ID, or job code, let's say. Okay, so let's see search by this. Okay, we don't have any existing workforce for this. So we have to start press. That's fine. What we are going to do here? Let's say I'll put a first name as Arohan, the first name, last name. Let's see, put it as a Panda. Arohan Panda, so unique ID, let's say, this is an optional bit, but let's say I will put it here. Let's say we are hiring for SL001, unique ID, let's put it there. SL001, or let's put it as a SL002, something else I will put it here. Let's say 001, then security ID, 
security ID element has to match the format this, which means first three letters. So this is a little bit tricky. First three letters of what was first name that is in our case, Arohan, Arohan, double A R. First three letters of the last name. So in our case, P A N, R P A N. Then month date. Okay, so this is like a combination of a right. So what I will do? Let's say he is R one. So R one. Then let's put it here. M M D D Y Y Y Y Y. So let's say it is nineteenth November two thousand right. So now he is a 22 years old guy. Let's uh, wait. Apply for this. Let's try to copy this. Then available date. So requested date is the first of August. Let's say available date. I will put it here. Like he is available from same date. Right. Submitted to. Let's say if you try something else. Let's see. I don't think so. There's only error. Yeah, submit it to other job posting. Let's say no. If I'm selecting yes, there's no other changes. Display candidates works for seeker to the buyer. Okay, so whenever submitting this job seeker, a workforce record is also created for this job posting. So this is a very typical thing. Whenever you are creating such kind of job seeker. There is also workforce record will be created because it's all about the workforce management software, right? And also it includes the vendor management, DMS system. So by default, a new workforce will be created, will not be visible to this buyer. You must obtain the candidate's permission. So this is something really good. You have to take the permission from the candidate before enabling this setting, as it will provide the visibility to the other job posting associated to this workforce record. So the job seeker will be visible to the for this job posting regardless of the set. So you have to be very careful whenever you are doing this kind of activity. So you have to understand this uh, concept as well. So let's see. Are you putting a uh, attachments? These are the different options uh, in the CV. They are giving a lot of options here. I can see that. So I will put a test file here. Nothing much. So let's say that is something fine. You put it here. That is just to attachment. So now, what next? So that is an CV in that we have put it here. Now let's see what is the asking they're asking here. So enter the mandatory data in the fields, including first name, last name, security ID, and available date. So attach this. Depending upon your friend class configuration, the security ID element can be matched the format. So this is already we have done it. M M D D Y Y Y Y first name last name. Okay, so this is also we have done uh, instead of three letters. So this is again a configuration, so that can be controlled, right? So that is we have done it. There is no error as such. So now after doing that, we will be moving to the next step. So attachment will not be anything. So qualifications also we can see no qualifications has been mentioned here. Yeah, but we have to check it out. Is, is there anything? Uh, whether it can be editable or not, right? So we will check it out. We have to continue then, so that next step is the next step. It is asking a remit to address is an optional one. So I don't see any values there. That is optional. Okay. So the standard rate is uh, I can see for our present rate is seventy five USD. Final delivery. Calculate. So this is the rate, the rate field also we have seen here, marker percentage, right? So pay rate and marker percentage. So let's say I'll put it a 75 or 100 USD, right? Calculate. Okay, 75 marker percentage, 75%. Okay, 
So rate category and UM. So this calculation, let's say we try 100%, let's have what is happening. It will be 100%, means 150, right? So pay rate is 75%, mark for percentage 100%, that means 150. If I am putting less, it will become like that, 50. So what are the calculations will happen as per this? Mark the percentage, what are the pay rate is there? So it will calculate that percent, 50% of 75, then it will add up, then the final billing rate will be like that, right? So yet, so for the timing, let's say I'll put it as an easy one. Understand? Let's say I'll put it as a 200%. So let's say calculate, then how much it should be? So it will be double 75, 75, 150. 150 plus you have 75. That is a 225. So let's keep the price out. Let's see that what is happening. So now what's next? We will continue to the second. So first step we have done just to have a recap. So setup we have done the initial. Okay, this is not saved, so it will give me an error here. Or we have to save it. Continue. Okay, the data has not been saved. Okay, right. So it is giving some error. Your data has not been saved. Let me give you the errors. Let's see that error. What is the error? Markup cannot exceed requested markup. Final bill rate cannot exceed requested bill rate. Okay, so that was the setting. Uh -huh. So you have to be very cautious about it, right? So let's say mark final bill rate cannot exceed requested bill rate. Okay. Right. So let's uh, reduce it. So we have to ask for too much. Let's say. 10%. Let's see. Let's like continue. Okay, so still is I cannot exceed requested bill rate. Okay, so let's put it in zero then. Same. Right. So we'll continue. Red category is when okay. now let's see. Review and summit. So this is the final step. And set so we can see the set of this is a First step, whatever we have seen the core, first step, last thing, R01 Panda. Then we do have security, unique ID, currency, qualifications, not there, rate, markup percentage, it was a restricted one, interesting one, because uh, as with the setting earlier in the config, one of the configurations, it was restricted from the buyer side. So we couldn't exceed that period. We cannot pay more than that. So we will see, submit it here. So I think there's anything else, let's see that. So, Note to save the submission with subsequent to the job, posting the draft, choose the update later. We can return. Okay, so now we are just submitting it. We will review the job seeker submit it, choose the job seeker tab. Okay, so we'll submit it. So it will take some time. It is loading and it will be finally submitting the job seeker in this way. Okay, done. So we can see the job seeker. Your job seeker has been submitted successfully and a new workforce record has been created for that, right? So we can see this is submitted. This is, uh, you can download the CV. You can uh, view that CV and currency. Here's the name of that job seeker. And if you wish to withdraw, we can withdraw, right? So this is the way we have to see for this billing analyst. As a supplier, talent supplier, I have created a job seeker. All right. So mm -hmm. now, thus, as we proceed, if any interviews happening and all the related information will be keep on this updating in this scenario. Right. So this is the job seeker page. Now let's take a snapshot here and we will capture in our presentation. Okay, so now let's go to step number three to tap to view the job seeker submitted, choose the job seekers tab. So that we can see also. So inside the job seeker, so there are multiple tabs for this particular job posting. We can see the job seeker for against this particular job, right? So now if I go to the home page.
we can see any kind of so we can see job posting job seeker suppose i would like to see the job seeker from here let's see oh my god so many more job seekers are there so we can see ramya singh is as well arohan panda so these are the different different ids which are auto generated i can see that right so you can see uh job so we have uh, multiple fields here so it is in some there are various statuses also for the jobs so we can see confirm means what for is closed shortlisted rejected interview this is similar to your in the recruiting also we have a different recruitment recruiting status right so here a lot of statuses are here work order related work order confirmed accepted activated withdrawn interview rejected so at present for this job seeker we do have we have submitted the profile only so we are in that particular stage and uh, these are different different site again the job posting this is very interesting so we how we can see also we can control from here what you like to see what you don't like to see so from this we understood that so here i put it here so this is my job seeker and view so if i go here from job seeker point of view this is my so how does particular section so this is my job seekers id and against that we do have job posting id right so this two are already mapped we can see that in this particular section so now i am pushing that into our presentation now let's we understood this let's job seeker this is how a typical job seeker so if you want to see that job seeker particularly just like you see a file profile in your candidate profile in your section sector recruiting similarly in the field class if you want to see for this particular thing so we can see this is in for being analyst he has been tagged the rate details if anything is there what is his rate 75 usd so similarly there is no interview as such so for that reason you can see it is a blank any kind of approval audit trails you can see that as well so at present we just submitted right so that is the thing and also we have here we have two things the user and customer support let's that nothing is there so any related information so we can also find out here so this is a job seeker id right so what does it mean the related documents you can see see this is uh, this is a bar. who can do what is the next step so buyer can review that so this is uh, as a supplier you have submitted this uh, profile now as a buyer we can see that so as a job seeker id we can see uscr this id 227 this is your job seeker id but at the same time we can see this another id that is a work post or a document they call it a document it has been created so this is also an important one we have to check so we have seen there are three numbers job posting is a different number job seeker id is another number and at the same time work force is also created is another number right so we have to be very much careful about this number because these are all three different numbers so let's now put it here like this so this is one number this is 227 ending with this 224 this is your work force side right okay. so this is uh, we have to understand very carefully now let's go there and on the slides we put it here we'll capture in our documents for our reference right so now what is next so as per this test fit we have uh, completed that uh, the scenario we will put pass all the scenario has been passed and we are happy with this obviously this is pass we'll put a color green 
control C. So submit a new job seeker. There is no issue. There is no issue in accessing and reviewing. There is no issue in submitting a new job seeker. Rather, complete required details. This is also no issue as such. Now let's move on. Entering rate, there was no issue. Submit job seeker, that is, there was also no issue. Right? So now we are done with this. So this is a completely past scenario. So now we'll move to the next test script. So now the next step is step number four, hiring a job seeker. So who are the persona we have to identify? So here we have to identify, means we have to log in as a buyer or administrator of a freelance, right? So let's see that. So first of all, the persona is here buyer and product because we'll be playing around key products, success factor, trade glass, and uh, s hana cloud, right? So at present still, we are in trade glass. Right, so let's see. So this is the wire, so let's highlight it. Now let's log in as a buyer. So this is also only four steps we are having. So what we have to do, we have to access the job posting, view the job seeker, and we have to hire the job seeker, All right? So this is the thing which we are going to do. Let's now log off as a supplier. Now I'll be logging as a generic user or like this. Okay, I cannot see anything here. Let's see what items starts from. Let me log in as a customer user. So that I think there's some issue with this ID. I will log in as a see some other ID. I will log in. So let's say I'll be logged in as a buyer or administrator. From the menu, select the job posting. So we have to go to the job posting from here. Let's say job posting. From here, we were looking into okay. So let's see that. Received in the last seven days. Okay, let's see that. What items are in the ever job posting? So, this is our job posting, the billing analyst, which is at the top. The status is showing as submitted. So, I can see that there are two positions and there is a one job seeker and he is available. So you can see even if there is a job seeker, if they are not available, right? On the date, right? There are so many job seekers have been posted, but we do not have a job seeker for means so even if their job seekers are there, whether they are available or not, you know, we see they are not available. Even the job seekers are there in form of the jobs, right? But for the first job seeking, this is a billing analyst, the same thing which we are looking into. We are billing analyst 204, CRD1JP. This is the job uh, ID, finance part, and also the talent is available, right? What I can do, so I can see that. So the job posting screen is displayed. Choose the ID of the job posting desired to view the job seeker. Choose the job seeker staff, right? So we are saying, let's say, with the job seeker, right? We have seen. Then is available. So I can see job seekers tab. I can see for this particular job posting, balance analyst. We have one job seeker to review, right? So what we can do as a buyer, 
or as a hiring manager in simple terms. So I can see, I can view the CV, download the CV. I can do a quick review. So let's see. So in a single page, I can view everything. Availability score, total score, cost score. Okay, so the scoring also, we understand how it is calculated. So we have seen all these things. Then, so we can see this entire thing is not presumed. So this is something email, resume, and the supplier name is withheld, right? So this based on the configurations, average rate. Okay, so this is, a, if I hover around it, I can see the rate of the candidate. So the job seeker, his rate, I can see it. When it was submitted, and if I to go for details about it, I would like to see that. I can see that as well, right? So all the details I can see here. So now I go back. Then, so what I can do? By default, it will be showing as a, as for this, requested date and availability meets requested criteria. Automatically, the system will check all these things, right? And also, if I go here, you can see for the calculate the estimated seat. So this is how it is calculated. Now, what I can do other than that, so from here in this place, we can select the job checkbox of the job seeker and choose higher. Suppose I have conducted some interview and I'm happy with this profile. What I can do, I can select and I can go for the next step. Let's say any actions. Yeah. Job seeker, email CV is there. I can rate. Oh, this only you cannot rate, only you can view it. Right. So let's criteria. Right. So now and we have to choose the higher. Choose higher. I get no job posting and attachment necessary to user. But I do not see the hire button here. Let's see. I have selected this. Okay, if I want to send this email to someone, I can send that. Let's say I want to send it to generic user or some other recipient, I can send it. For the review, Let's see why this option is not coming here. I've selected. So this is something in, I am not able to find it out. So I will make it as a fail. So view the job seekers under the two job seekers tab. We have seen that job seekers tab. So let's go back. View job seeker. This is the first one submitted, right? And uh, this is the job seeker ID. And uh, so details if I go here. These are different score rating. No longer trails, everything is there. Actions, 
print only option is there. But I do not see the approval button. Yeah, so that is something I will mark it as a failure for this test scenario. Somehow I'm not able to find it out. Job seekers list. Submitted. This is our main document, the Lingana list. We have one job seeker and we have received this uh, job seeker. Now, so this is, uh, we'll mark it as the we are able to log in, we are able to job posting to the job seeker. But this create work order screen might be, could be an authorization issue. We need to check it out. So let's try with another login. So this is something, it's not uh, visible from here. Let's see another login. So let's I try that job posting. First of all, I will look into the job seeker. This is R1 Panda. He is a job seeker. And uh, let me. Okay, higher button is appearing here. That means it could be an authorization issue. So this higher button was not visible for that particular user, right? So now as a generic user or this is an administrator or as a buyer, that's the right role I can say for this particular bearing analyst role, I can now simply hire this person. So I have a lot of options I can see. I can schedule an interview, uh, shortlist, reject, mark as interviewed, right? So let's see, schedule an interview. I can schedule an interview for this candidate, right? So select interviewers. Let's see, I am the interviewer. Time shown is fine. Today is the date. Step in it here. Continue. Okay, this must be the future. So this is fine. Best case would be in the R no. July, okay, interviewer. Okay. Interview type, video conference is fine. Submit to the supplier. Okay, so now this will go to the supplier that uh, this interview is been scheduled. So now I will log in as a supplier. So let's see what is there. I respond to this. No, not this one. View the job posting. So for the billing analyst, we have to check it out. So for this, see how many who is a job seeker? Arohan Panna. So he is uh, he is a job seeker. Okay, interview has been scheduled by. So we can see that immediately, right? So Arohan Panda, his CV has been shortlisted and he has been selected for the shortlisted for the interview number one. Right, so now we can see. So this is the interview schedule has been done. So now he will be going for an interview process and all.
All right. So now let's log in as a well, generic user once again. Let's say I'll go for the job posting once again. Mm -hmm. You stop posting. This is my billing error list. The job seeker. Right. So I can do. So if I want, I can see the options here. So here the previous is that another user, the higher what was not coming. But here I can do sort list, I can do mark as interviewer, I can do whatever I want, right? So I have mark the interview has been, let's say, sort list I have done, mark as interviewed. I can give a take some rating from the interviewer. Outstanding. Market is good. So now, what I can do finally, I can also fire. So I'm just not going through the entire process, but uh, it may take more time. So for our understanding, we will simply select the candidate and fire. Right. So now, as soon as you hire, we are coming to a new screen called Create Work Order. Right. So is it the uh, same thing? Yes. So we can see that the create work order screen is displayed and lists the terms requested on the original job post, right? So with this, we have uh, completed the step number four. So we will put it as a pass. So once we have done, then we will go to step number five, what is there? Okay, in step number five, uh, that's another step, step, completing and submitting the work order, right? So this is what on the create work order, so this is continuation from the previous one. Review the data and enter additional data as for the requirement. So this is just step two step. So basically we have to, Goods listed is expected, yes. Invoice of is the good is based, yes. At a category, we select multiple costs and for the new interior posting, which after this, so this is a file, material group, product, purchase group. Okay, all these things we have to enter. Completing the work order. Okay, let's see. So this is our creating a work order screen. We have reviewing and submitting. We will see what the tenure. Any information is there? I don't think so. There is no potential matches also. That is fine. Then this is the setup you can see. Legal and keep purchase unit uh, Google Senate site location. What is this change setup? Let's see. Okay, if anything is required to be changed, maybe that was the reason. Company code to be obtained by integrations, ERS flag. Invoice is goods receipt based. So this is uh, to be visible to buyer users only. This is also to be buyer's user only. And we have logged in as generic user that is the uh, buyer users only. Now everything has been given except these three things. What we type is uh, CW, purchase group, product type, material group, item category. So these are the things we have to select under material group yp mm 0 material group yb no this is a purchase group yeah purchase group should be 001 okay so purchase group in the select is 001 product type product type it should be two let's say two and the material group should be 
yb mm00 let's see yb mm00 it's already existing these are all related to material management model if you want to explore more you can have uh, fundamentals of sap mm a little bit then you will be able to understand what is a purchase group what is a material group what is the product type and all these things to be updated from PR reference ID, we don't worry. Item category, we have to select, uh, let's say, let's continue. Don't go worry. Oops, drop signal possible match to another move master lock figures instead. The picker and choose continue. And uh, yes, I think uh, there is no mention of item category, but let's see. E. Okay, this was mentioned earlier. Item category should be E, right? The value of item if you've selected multiple cost and have a new liquid job in after this the value of the item category is not applicable so okay so here we will be putting not applicable let's say right because we have chosen i remember we have chosen two cost centers i think multiple cost centers on this particular job posting right so now we can have uh, start date and end date and all present uh, final terms also the trial terms also is there Worker setting auto register to job seeker. So let's see. Submit work order on well, the review and submit readings. Fill the details. Say submission with job seeker. The job posting with draft. We can complete. Okay. So now what I can do? I will submit it. Let's see. So these are all regular stuff. Whatever already been there. So we just uh, same data we have to review here. And uh, the cost allocation is, I will say, to a cost sector we have allocated, right? That I can see. Buyer reference, purchase order, comments to buyer, everything is an optional thing. Okay, so I will continue. So this is how this screen looks like. So we'll take a snap here. While creating the wash order, how does the screen look like? So I think the step number four, we have not taken the screen sort, but yeah, that's fine. So we have to... Take a slide here. We have to see the important part is here. This one, this category, this is yeah. only for us. Purchase group, product type, material group. So these are the screen in the screen. You'll be able to find it out here. So what is next? So before that, I will also take another snapshot here. In the top, how the kit what order will be looking like. Okay, so this is our step number five. Uh, with this, now we're going to submit it. Click continue. Hope there is no error. Yes, we don't have any error. So in this review and submit button, finally, you will be checking everything. Everything is there. Work order dates, work order setting, time set, accounting, estimates, cost allocation. Mm -hmm general information then now having some finally we'll be submitting it so this is how a work order can be created so you can see the work order is has been submitted now right so what is the next step we will see before that let's take a snapshot of this as well arohan panda for the particular billing analyst position he has been work order has been submitted for this who submits the work order so basically from here we can see after reviewing from the supplier the buyer will be submitting the work order right so let's uh, take a snapshot and add it here right so with this we completed this activity and now we are going to update our test scenario and let's see so we have completed and submitted this work. Now let's see. We will submit and we'll put it in the pass. Okay. 
So this is done. So step number five is done. Now we will move to the step number six. Step number six is approving the work order. So in the step number six, we will be approving the work order. Let's see. That is our step number six, new slide. And we will go to the speed glass and approving it. Approved. Okay. Okay. Approved. Okay, so the document has been, uh, we can see, uh, was approved and sent to the sent for further approvals. Click here to see approvals and approval routing. So here, we, if you want to see the workflow or the route map, we have to click this. Let's see who is the next approver. Okay, I can see. The all steps, if I want to see, submitted by this sequence one. This has been submitted and uh, it has to be approved by one of the, this is for HANA. Okay, so this is someone approved by this. There's an approval mechanism. So that is our step number six, which is we are going to do. So now we have to log in to SAP PayDLAS as a system approver. Let's say. What order has been submitted? So I have to let me log in. So, meanwhile, let's see uh, what is the status here for this particular job posting from a uh, Supplier point of view, let's see. So we can see that for this position, job seeker, he has work order, it is still showing the pending approval. So because uh, the level one has been approved, right? So It is still showing from a supplier point of view. So this is from a supplier point of view. It was doing that. Okay. So I'll just make a comment here. Not here. Add a text. Supplier point of view. Right. So now let's see, we will log in as an another approver. First of all, the buyer has already approved it. So we will log in as another approver. Let's see. So we can see what order is pending approval. Pending approval. Two things. Still need to approve. What on the list? So you can see the status has been now changed to pending approval, right? For Arohan Panda, the name has been called. So this is the work order, right? And uh, work order, this is job posting ID. See, okay. Let me log in as a different as a user. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so this is a generic user. I will go there. View work order, work items, student ever, work for work order. So we can see all the work related information here. I'll go to the work order. So from this, let's see. So this is the work order. Okay. Edit work order, all these two options are here. Pending approval. So, as for this, we will see access the work item, select uh, but I do not see the options to approve here. Let's see. Okay, meanwhile, I got a notifications work order to be approved. Okay, this is job seeker is Aron Panda. And work order is this. Customer and buyer is this. Buyer, work order, job seeker. And uh, the following URL will take is the approval page, right? So this is the supplier. This is the work order ID, work order sequence, business unit. So let me go to this. Okay, so we'll capture this. Some error is coming. Yes. Maybe during the work order approval, we will capture this. Let's refresh it. Okay, so it is asking for a field class uh, ID and password. So let me put it out this as a buyer approver two. Distri okay, distributor, it should be a distributor CR1. Welcome one star. Okay, so this is something else coming up. Let's see it once again. Let's log in. So this is something here. This is a buyer number two approval. Bending analyst. I see. Okay, I do not see an option to approve it. This is a generic user applications. Integrations. Okay, so let's log in then using this. Uh, let's see. Back to the work order. Let's say I will log in as a reply. As for HANA integration.
work order has been created. This is the work order. Work order ID. Print this one. So I can see job posting ID, work order ID, job seeker ID. So, but uh, So it is pending approval with this for questions. Buyer, distributor. Work order. Output. Okay, I can see that, but why I don't see those options here as well. But this is the process we generally of what order is updated. Anyway. Approving work order we have done, but it's just something some other work order we have updated. But let's see, is there any other job posting, work order revision? Okay, so all the options I can see here. Work order activity, mark is complete. Proceed within last seven days, supply filter. Account analyst, to generic user. Okay, this is something which I have to look at. All module, document, 204. No, I cannot see that. So this is something else. Moving approval. Job posting approval. If I have to approve a job posting, this will be an approval. Let's approve it. If it is a uh, expensive, this is how it will be approved. Okay, but if it is a uh, mark is complete, onboarding activity completion. Okay, these are all part of. Okay, I can see he has been moved to onboarding activity completions. Mark is complete. Thank you. 
somehow this thing is up here. Let's say work order ID, but see this is customer receive work item, hiring manager, general user. These are the options we do have. Work order ID lets me see it in another window. How does it look like? If I don't see that editing work approve button here. This is where work is complete. Complete date. Mark is complete. Mark is complete. Mark is complete. So in this case, editing work order is not permitted to do that. So approving work order somehow the route flow something is missing. So still it is showing pending approval, but let's see. If it is showing pending approval, then who will be approving it? Approvers review the work order. Requester of program office selects obstacle for hiring. Here's a work order. This is our work order. Approval. So this is just an important one which is we need to capture here. You work out the status. Add approval. Let me put an approval myself. Otherwise, generic user. Okay. So now, finally. We will take this as a ops, so we will approve it. Let's see. Okay, I can see that. Click here to see the approvals and approval routing. Current step. Okay, this is an add integration. So. Generic user, you will be approving that. So, so this approver has already approved it. Let's try someone else. Dribble. Check it out with administrator fingers. Let's try it. Let's try that. 